in time, so sometimes it's best not to know it all. It's fantastic because you do truly have to be within your imagination. Like I get on set and I go, okay, right today, um, today I've got to pull my my brother's life tube out of my stomach because he's dead, and then then I've got to go and run from that fireball, and then then we've got to like be burnt alive, and then we re recorporealize, and then we have lunch, and then <laughs> it's amazing. What can I say? <laughs> it's unbelievable. So yeah, it has been challenging, but I don't. I think the day that it stops challenging me and the day that I start going uh, is the day I should no longer be there because it's not good for me, not good for you guys. But at the moment, I'm roaring. <laughs> That's how it is <clears throat> part of me in Farscape land. It's all, it's all very playful, very energetic. It's like you go in there and there's a lot of kids having fun and it's kind of the best way to be, I guess. Because it is, it's a very intense schedule and you're working these really crazy hours. I heard here in the States you get 12 hour turnarounds. I'm moving here. <laughs> um, you know, so you do, you become very passionate about, about the job because it is your life. You get truly farscaped. <laughs> no, but really, thank you guys to the, to the moon and back for making Farscape or letting Farscape live in your hearts and imagination. <laughs> pleasure to be here. We were talking before with Wayne. We've been working in a vacuum for two years. Meeting you here today is the first time we have um, you see you in reality and it's great, you know. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, for both of us, I think I can safely say it's, it's great to play baddies per se but with intelligence. So many of our baddies, they're dumbed down and, and their, their, their power is diminished. I, I mean, on my character, it's, it's, it's been wonderful to play a bad guy who always wins. <laughs> Very rarely happens. Bad guys usually lose. Yeah. And, it's, and I think it's great that our baddies actually are intelligent baddies. Uh, that's clever and it's good. And it uh, gives us a lot more freedom and, and pleasure to, to play. I think it makes it much more fun for the audience. Absolutely. The day I did my camera test, I was initially, the design was to wear um, contact lenses. And I put them in and I'm not particularly comfortable with contact lenses. And, you know, I was prepared to wear them and that was the design. And Dave Elsie looked at me one day and said, look, take one, on this particular day, and said, take one contact lens out, took one out. And he said, oh, take the other one out. And he took the other one out and he said, oh, yes, Wayne's eyes are much colder. <laughs> For better or worse, but what, and we went with my eyes, but what that did was, it made me more available, because they're my eyes, they're human eyes, and it's much spookier to have a set of human eyes looking at you through that than a, a white eye, whatever the contact lens happens to be, that's another, another veil that the actor has to work through. So that was a gift that came from chance. So I, I look at, there's any opportunity for a gift to appear, so grab it. Uh, do I see Crace as a good soldier gone bad? I think when he was, you know, going up through the ranks in the military, he had this immense drive. And um, I don't think, within that culture and environment of peacekeeper mentality and military, especially military, there is no, you know, second... You don't have a choice in a way. And for, for Crace to succeed to being captain was a really hard road, and this is in the backstory. So whether he's good or not, it, it's, um, I don't think he's as ruthless as, uh, well, he is ruthless when, given, uh, when he's presented with choices. I, but I, I kind of see him as a, strange enough, as a pure spirit. I don't see him bad. So the choices that we make in the sky uh, up there at the other end of the corridor are up for grabs. That's the beauty of it, you know, and, and uh, so I don't, I don't necessarily, I don't think of Chris as, as a, uh, 
as a villain. I don't think of him as a bad character at all. I just think of him as absolutely passionate, absolutely driven. And if he needs to actually uh, achieve something, he'll do it, no matter. And, and that's where I come from as an actor, and that's, that's the way I work. And so it's incredibly liberating. I just go for it, you know. <laughs> I, don't, I mean, you guys are, would confirm uh, this or otherwise for me. I think there's nothing more interesting than <laughs> liking a bad guy <laughs> or wanting to be a bad guy. <laughs> for years, I, I, would, I would struggle with it and fight against being cast as, you know, the baddie or the guy that, you know, um, kidnaps the children or whatever. Uh, but I've grown to accept it and grown to actually, um, in, not even more than enjoy it, just to accept that this, this is what I do. This is what I do. I'm lucky mm -hmm. to, to be able to at least have, you know, I'm, I'm very lucky to have a niche. I have a niche. Um, the day I walked onto the set, um, the, the, everyone stopped. <laughs> everyone put down tools. It's like, and I walked up to a girl who uh, who was a clapper loader who I knew very well. I know her family. I know her kids. And I sidled up next to her and just happened to say, "Well, and how is Benny? <laughs> who is uh, one of her sons?" And the look of horror in her eyes. <laughs> so. I knew from that moment, I don't have to do much. <laughs> Give me the information and it's okay. So I cannot tell you how liberating and empowering that particular day was as an actor and as Wayne. And from that day on, um, it, it, um, I wouldn't say it was easy, but I was very, very confident in you know, wearing this outrageous costume, this outrageous mask. It was, I felt very, very comfortable and um, I grew six inches taller, literally. As I say, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling quite handsome now. <laughs> <laughs>